Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Zeneca and I'm here to share interesting, exciting NFT projects. Today I am talking with Jenkins the Valet. Who is Jenkins the Valet? Jenkins the Valet is a bored ape. Yes, I am talking to a bored ape. There is obviously a human behind the bored ape, but in this interview, you will not see a real physical person. You will see a bored ape avatar and the voice will sort of be behind the behind the avatar. I am super excited for you to hear this project. It is honestly one of the coolest projects I've heard of ever in the NFT space. Jenkins, uh, his journey has been almost a year long now uh, from idea to just an entire process, building out a character and then a world, a universe, a book, a story, a, a licensing platform for other people to license their intellectual property coming from NFTs. And it's so fascinating. I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to share this conversation with you. I learned so much. I had so much fun uh, chatting with Jenkins. I hope to get another chance to chat with him in the future. Yeah, well, let's, let's just jump right in. Um, if, you, if you want to, a like, a comment, a subscription to the channel would be great. If not, enjoy. Bye. Hello, Jenkins of LA. It's, it's so nice to meet you. Zeneca, hello. Thank you so much for having me on. It's, uh, it's, it's truly an honor. The honor is all mine. I, I was saying before we jumped on air how, you know, we've sort of been orbiting each other in the space. Like, like I feel like a lot of sort of the people who were in here in the space a year ago and have just been like building their own little things a lot of the time we don't really get a chance to connect. So I'm just thrilled to be able to have a chat with you and a conversation and hear more about Jenkins Valet. Yeah, totally. I, I feel like, you know, I've just been like standing at the valet stand, throwing tweets your way for like months. <laughs> so to get to get to hear your voice and get to talk like this is, uh, is, is going to be super fun. Yeah. So let's, um, I want to start from the very beginning, sort of just from the perspective of, I mean, I obviously know about your project Jenkins of LA, but I'm just going to mm -hmm. assume, presume people, some people watching have never heard of Jenkins of LA before. So what is your big level overview? What is Jenkins of LA in your words? Yeah, absolutely. A great question. I think to answer that properly, I actually need to give you a little bit of background on myself and on my partner, Safa. I studied creative writing in college, have been a writer for a really long time um in the last decade made a switch uh into software uh where i've worked in product management and consumer tech uh safa has a brand building background um is in marketing community building corporate strategy things like that and so uh in a lot of ways the nft space like when it was really sort of coming up what was it uh i guess the end of end of 2020 um, yeah we uh yeah like top shot kind of we're both big basketball fans so we were into top shot and and um when, when the space really started to boom we noticed that 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 it felt like a lot of things that were happening or that could happen in the space were really at the intersection of like everything that we love doing there was content and media there was community there was brand obviously there's a whole lot of tech too and so um just as like fans and as as consumers we were pumped about like the opportunity to really like dive in i think both of us like you know wish we could just go back to like 2017 and start building then yeah. too because like you know and, and obviously so many people do but 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 it was awesome when when folks really started to get into the space in 2020. um and one thing that we noticed was that there were uh many avatars obviously uh crypto punks were were sort of the biggest at the time early 2020 and uh, people would use them as their own avatars on social media. We would see stuff and you'd even see Twitter threads where people would say things like uh, they would compare CryptoPunks to like a Rolex or something, right? Mm -hmm. As a as a way to describe why spending like a lot of a fiat currency on a on a high value NFT was sort of worth it because because it's it's signaling or something in the same way that that it is when someone drives like a fancy car or wears fancy clothes or something like that. But but one thing that we noticed was that there were um, a lot of these avatars, especially around the the mint around the Board Ape Yacht Club, they, they looked like they had their own personality. They looked like they had stories to tell. And so we developed this thesis, Safa and I, that, that the next generation of household characters might actually originate on the blockchain. 
and that these would be characters that were independent entities from uh, from like people, right? So it's not me on social media using Ape1798 as my profile picture. It's Jenkins the Valet and Jenkins the Valet mm. is separate. And so often like these podcasts uh, or conversations are sort of funny because like I'm talking as a human with this Jenkins the Valet avatar. And so there's sort of like both, right? Sometimes I'm yeah. a character, sometimes I'm not. And and as and as Jenkins, I think has grown in popularity, Certainly, I, I served as the original voice for Jenkins writing the early pieces, but Jenkins is a whole lot more than like just me right now. And uh, it's becoming clear that I'll have to probably like finally create my personal Twitter account or something like that because, because yeah. Jenkins, like actually it's, it's, it's sort of the thesis playing out, right? Like Jenkins is a character it, on his own right and exists, you know, completely separate from, from Safa and I. Um, and so that's what we did, right? We believed that, that characters could exist we bought ape 1798 who who you know is is the inspiration for the the rendering that i'm using in the profile picture for this conversation and um we started posting stories as jenkins the valet to introduce him to the community basically to say i'm jenkins i'm from the other side of the swamp it the biggest honor of my life was becoming the valet at the board api club and and like that he looks like a valet right yeah. so so it, it was it just came out right it was so easy for that story to flow out because of all of the apes and so many are so cool and so many look like they have stories to tell this guy with the matching service vest and irish boho hat mm -hmm. like is the person who's standing out front you toss him your keys or something like that and so we just started writing content as jenkins to introduce a character to the space and, and 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 at first really all we wanted to do was just contribute and like tell stories as this character and so did you you clearly had in mind that you wanted to buy this sp specific ape and, and create the character of jenkins of la before you bought the ape right or what you did you buy the ape and then later on decide to go yeah. with jenkins of la good question they, they sort of um I guess it's like a little sort of of a chicken and egg, right? Like mm. we, the thesis of characters on the blockchain came first. Then I started searching for apes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and at the time, if you remember like May, 2021, it was all about rarity. Like, like, yeah. like generative traits were new. And so having like rare traits was super cool. So it was all about, and apes were, you know, probably a point to eat floor or something. And so everything was, if, if you'd been in the space at all, sort of all of the apes were accessible to some degree. Mm -hmm. and, and so folks were going after gold apes or blue beam apes or, you know, apes in suits and things like that. And, and, and those are awesome. Like, like I wish that I had grabbed a bunch of them, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, but so we started searching for apes who looked, uh, who just looked like characters who looked like they just were like screaming to tell a story. And so, uh, I think Yahoo did an article um, a few months back and they, and they referenced Jenkins and they called Jenkins an aesthetic ape. And I mm -hmm. think like, that's what we were looking for. We were looking yeah. for apes who like, who, who looked like something like they had a role. And so there were there, you know, there are probably hundreds that, that could have been something. And Jenkins ape 1798 was the one that jumped out. It's the one that um, I pulled the trigger on that uh, I brought to Safa and I said, Hey, this might be the one. And, and then, you know, that same day, the name Jenkins the Valet came to us and, and, and we went from there. And so it, it sort of was like both were happening at the same time, looking for an ape and thinking about what which ones could be characters and which ones wouldn't be. I want to go back just a little bit. You mentioned like the thesis came first of wanting to take a, a blockchain avatar and, uh, you know, create a character out of it and give it its own story. Did you have that idea, you know, well before the Board Ape Yacht Club existed? And were you looking at CryptoPunks and because of IP reasons decided against them? Or did it all sort of happen around the same time the apes were already out? Um, we certainly were talking about it with respect to CryptoPunks before BAYC. But I don't think we could have articulated it exactly how we do now until the BAYC drop. I should also note that I didn't, we didn't, you know, Jenkins, obviously it was a blind mint. We Jenkins wasn't minted. Mm. We bought Jenkins on the secondary a few weeks later. Uh, but seeing the, seeing the art style that BAYC brought to market really accelerated our ability to articulate what it was that we were trying to say, because going from like pixel fidelity to the art that they brought helped us better understand the depth that you could like build 
household IP around an individual avatar. Like it's just tough with punks, even forget the commercial rights aspect. Mm. Um, I think punks comic has done an amazing job creating lore around um, those avatars, but it really is like the avatars are truly sort of more of an inspiration than anything else because mm -hmm. they're, they're just like, not like visually, they're not as rich. Yeah. Uh, and, and so apes, apes helped quite a bit. And obviously it was, um, you know, it's where we pulled the trigger to really jump in was because we were so inspired by by what they'd done with their art style. So, all right, you, you bought the ape. Jenkins of LA was born the same day. When did Jenkins of LA, the writer's room, like the, the NFT project, when did that, the idea for that sort of, where, where did that come from? And uh, yeah, when in the timeline did that occur? Right. So in May, um, we bought Jenkins we started writing stories as jenkins um the first story i think i mentioned was was an intro to the fact that jenkins had this role at the yacht club and that really more than anything he was a great secret keeper and so because because jenkins practiced discretion um important apes trusted him with all sorts of odd jobs so jenkins you know held private keys he snuck mistresses into the club through laundry carts like you name it jenkins did it um and the idea was that because demand for the board ape yacht club was growing there were offers sort of in jenkins dms to to, to make a tell-all hmm. um and and that first story that we posted i think the account had about 30 followers we posted it and it just did like insanely well. I mean, like it, it, everybody liked it. And that was, that was, that was an inspiration it, to us. It was like, okay, there's something here. We thought people might like characters. This is like a little bit of proof that they do. And so for the next six weeks, um, we started writing stories for other apes. We, we, the next day after the original story, we posted a form where, uh, basically it was like a nod and a wink saying, Hey, Jenkins probably has served you in his role as valet like remind us of what we've done together and we'll write a story for you and so we had like you know at first dozens eventually hundreds of of, of of ape owners who were writing in and telling us like really hilarious things about their their apes and so one that comes to mind is um josh ong beijing do on on twitter uh he has an a robot ape um in a hawaiian shirt and he, he wrote us this long blurb about how that ape, his name was Maui Prime, and he was sent back from the future to destroy the Ethereum blockchain. And we wrote this story about how Jenkins is on an off day wearing a Hawaiian shirt on the beach. And then there's like this bang and a, and, and a robot ape shows up. And he's just like, he wants to destroy the blockchain, but he's like naked because he's a robot. And so <laughs> Jenkins takes his Hawaiian shirt off and gives it to this robot and says, before you destroy the blockchain, let me take you to the board ape yacht club because mm. um you might see something that like makes you you know have a change of heart and, and the robot is super mean and angry and when jenkins takes the robot to the yacht club the robot sees that there are all these other apes that are like him and that they're from the blockchain and uh he decides obviously not to destroy it and he sort mm. of joins the club and so we were writing like a bunch of stories like that and and it was really apparent that like a couple things were happening the stories kept being super well received and it was all a credit to the community because the stuff like Josh was writing in, everyone was writing. Like we had hundreds mm. of little blurbs from who these apes were and they were, some were villains and some were like, you know, one was a dentist. Like there was all sorts of like <laughs> the whole spectrum of like normal stuff to, to sort of fantasy things. And so um, we, we quickly realized that writing stories and posting them on Twitter was super fun and people liked them, but it wasn't gonna scale. And that we, we had an opportunity to continue building to sort of validate this thesis that characters um, and even worlds would sort of be born on the blockchain. And so that was what gave us the inspiration for the writer's room. The idea was basically to just like up level what we were doing with that form and with stories on Twitter by one, by introducing an NFT that would, that would serve as your authentication into a web app that we would build ourselves. And in that web app, users would, ab would, would be able to vote on, on Jenkins' biggest story yet. So they would set the creative direction, the genre, the plot, all those types of things. And they would also license their avatars to the work so that they could participate in the financial upside too, where there's like a bona fide give and take. They give us mm. the IP and we, we use that IP obviously in the book. Um, and in return, you know, they, they split um, part of net profits. 
And so what, what the writer's room is, was really just, you know, an effort to take what was already happening on Twitter and just make it something they could scale a bit better. And so that was a sprint to build that basically went from late May until August 4th, which was the night that, that um, folks were able to join the writer's room. And we sold out, um, it was 6,942 writer's room NFTs. There's a point zero at the end there for like a little meme culture. <laughs> of course. Uh, um, yeah. And, uh, and, and that actually sold out in six minutes. Uh, yeah. And so I think like when that happened, we realized that um, it wasn't like a money making event. It was our seed round mm -hmm. and it was an opportunity to really build a business. And so that's what we've been doing since. Yeah, I remember that that night I minted some and that there was a lot of hype and excitement about around it. The whole market was really, I guess, frothy. It was, you know, August, that crazy right. first real bull run we've had. I mean, I guess what we're going through now in you know, January, February 2022, it's somewhat similar. Back then, it was like unprecedented. Totally. And everyone was just talking about Jenkins of LA, it's a cool project, and, you know, you know, minting now, go, 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 go. And then um, I feel like, and, and I probably fall in this category as well, People, a lot of people that minted probably just minted because of that hype and, and didn't really understand or conceptualize or see exactly what you were actually building. And so then there was this period of maybe like a couple of months where, you know, the hype went away a bit and you were still building, but like the secondary market price dropped quite a lot. I think it went down like 0.01, 0.02. And, yeah. you know, I, I would see on my Twitter timeline a couple of, every now and then a couple of smart people were like, most underrated bet in, in in the nft space you know people are going to regret not getting these and i eventually got in a few more you know along the way cool. but um yeah it, it was sort of it seemed very much like you were heads down building which is great and what were you doing in i guess during that two to three month period where um right yeah you, you took the seed funding what were you building yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, but, e but even before I jump into that, I, I want to just give a shout out to like the people who who held conviction sort of in what we were trying to do. There were very few of them. Um, one who comes to mind is is someone named King Dragon, who's who's one of our biggest holders today, who just like he kept buying these bundles. Um, and we don't we don't I should say like we actually don't even really like floor price isn't a, isn't a metric for us internally. It's mm -hmm. just not a focus. We are trying to build a business that that can last for decades. And so um, I think that's one of the reasons that the floor price was so low, actually, is that folks bought in to flip and it wasn't a project to flip. It's, it's, it's a bet on sort of decentralized crowdsourced content. And there were a few people, even when we just looked like this, like, you know, people called us a rug, right? And we were building yes. yeah. and, a, and a handful of people um you know we're with us and and it it just still like uh like honestly the ultimate like honor is that those people were with us then because it was like wow like you you know they, they they knew it but obviously folks who join now like we have we have so much respect and appreciation for too so so what were we building we we were building um we were building the writer's room and the writer's room is a few different things the maybe the most tangible aspect of it is the software platform it's my background. We, we built a team around me, um, all with, you know, public company consumer tech experience to, to build what we were building. Um, and it's nuanced. I mean, it, there's, there's, there's all these like really complicated legal flows that exist in it because you have to prove which NFTs you own. And then you have to sign, you know, legal documentation that license it to us or, we even created a sort of a free use licensing agreement where two people could make an agreement between each other before turning around and licensing to us. And so there's, there's just like a lot of like really detailed sort of legal things. We obviously were crafting those agreements as well. And on the creative side, we were building out, um, you know, what we thought and, and still do believe is like the way to make uh, content on the blockchain, which is to partner uh, like a community of really authentic Web3 native people with elite Hollywood creatives. And so we were pounding the pavement trying to find writers who, who would write the Jenkins tell-all. And, and one of our advisors, G Money, um, who in a lot of ways is inspiration for, um, you know, our belief that characters can be born on the blockchain because he's an example of someone who has absolutely built a brand around, you know, his punk, um, who's an ape. Uh, G Money 
had met Neil Strauss and, and, and introduced the two of us. And before that, we had been emailing all these writers, right? So our floor price is at like 0.01. Um, uh, some people are, you know, tweeting that we yeah. like rug them. We're emailing and trying to connect with all these like literary agents and they're all like, most aren't responding. And then a handful are just like, like laughing at us. And some yeah, people well. was like, you know, I've never, of all of the things I've ever seen, no, I've never gotten an email from, from a cartoon ape. Uh, like, no thanks. Our, our mm -hmm. writers are busy doing what they do, which is writing books. Like we're book people. Mm -hmm. You're not, no, thank you. And so it was, it was, it was quite demoralizing to be honest with you. And, and um, we just kept pounding the pavement until we found people who, who were interested and, 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 you know, huge shout out to Neil Strauss for, for, for sort of, you know, seeing this vision and, and wanting to be a part of it. Um, around that time, we also signed to the CIA books department. Mm. We had started talking to Neil um, and a few other people had said, you know, like send us an offer. And we were like, we, we don't come from this world. Right. So we were like, which is so crypto. Yeah. But we were, we were like, yeah. damn, what is, what is it like? What does a book offer look like? Like, what, what do we even offer? Yeah. And so we sort of networked into CIA just to ask, like from like a mutual connection to ask their agent how you write an offer. And they said, hey, you know, we might be able to help you with more than just like this offer. What you're doing is really interesting. And so really the first time I can remember besides after the mint, the first time I can remember a bunch of people coming into the project was around the news that we had signed with CIA for representation across books, podcasts, film, and, and more. And I think that just like, that showed people um, that, that we were building something that might last rather than something that was like a, you know, would have been a quick flip, but just like went, went down to 0.01 or something like that. Yeah. I rem that was, that was huge news. Uh, because if I'm rem remembering correctly, they signed Jenkins, the valet, the character, correct? Not they did you, the human behind it. So th th they signed an NFT, which is a first and just a huge sign of like validation, I think for the entire space. And obviously Jenkins, the valet and the writer's room. So yeah, there, there was a lot of buzz around then. Um, and then obviously getting Neil Strauss, he's a 10 times New York Times bestseller, I think, or 11. Yeah, um, he's 10. He's 10, although you may sometimes see the number 11 because we're pushing hard to, to make this next This is going to be 11. 11. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's so amazing. So he came on around the same time as the, the CAA announcement? Exactly. Um, I You know, I can't quite remember... I think we, 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 we probably, you know, signed and announced the signing to CIA first and then Neil followed. Um, mm. but, but all of the conversations were sort of happening around the same time. And that it was a huge moment for us because, because just that like real people from the entertainment world making a bet that characters could come from yeah. our little corner of the internet was like massive for us. And, and I think gave us a ton of energy to keep building and keep pushing. And when, when was this timeline wise, November, December, 2021 or earlier? I think this was late September into October. And oh, wow. so, you know, it's funny. Man. Is so NF, NF, I so weird <laughs> because for us, it was like years had gone by. Yes, and when yeah. I say that, it's like, what was it, like six weeks or something? But it, but it, <laughs> it, it was, it, uh, it just felt like forever, and uh, it's hard to believe that so much time has passed between, even between now and then, because it, yeah. it, it, it feels like you know, time is simultaneously like it flies by, and then it goes fast, but it's also so slow. I don't know, I, like I, something about NFTs and Web three. It's like every we're in like a time warp. It really is insane. And everyone agrees with it as well. It's just like, if you're in, you, just, yep. you feel it. Totally. So that was uh, September, October. What sort of happened between then and and then like end of December, start of January? Because I know around end of right. December, start of January, you started licensing apes, correct? Yeah. So we actually started licensing apes and mutants um, right around uh, like the American Thanksgiving. So, so November 25th or something like that, mm -hmm. last week of November. And we ran licensing from the last week of November until the first week of January. So that whole holiday period, we were licensing Apes and Mutants. And, uh, you know, at, with, a, with a product background, there's 
like launches are super fun. They're also incredibly stressful. It's like when you yeah. see if, if you, you've obviously, you know, you've QA'd and you've, you've done all these types of tests, but there's no substitute for real users. And the first day we opened up licensing, I think, you know, I don't know, 300 apes and mutants licensed to the work. And that to me was probably like the, the first time in the entire process where I like took a deep breath. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, you know, like people are going through and it's working. And we started publishing Neil, Neil, Neil had written a bunch of world building questions he had about uh, the board Ape Yacht club and, 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 and other things that he wanted guidance from the writer's room on. And so we, we had posted maybe about 25 to 30 questions that would, would end up defining plot. Mm. So the writer's room was also voting on, you know, this idea that Jenkins, the valet, has become convinced that the fate of the yacht club is in his hands, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the one of the rules that is a bannable offense at the board of yacht club is sharing things that happen at the club outside of the club. But because this thing is such a big deal, Jenkins has decided that he's actually going to leave the club and go tell a reporter what's going on. And so the community voted for all of that. And and I, you know, I have I have uh, <laughs> I have not as many writers room NFTs as I wish I did, but but I'm <laughs> in there like voting. And yeah. uh, I I don't think I've gotten a single vote right yet. Like I'm just really bad at, wow. at like voting on what the community <laughs> wants. And so, uh, but it's really cool to see that because because the whole you know we really believe that that a group of people can come together to make something better than what any one person can do by themselves. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the output from the community votes, um, I'm blown away because 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 yeah. we no one would have thought of it on their own except like they they string together in this really interesting way. And so. Anyway, between late November and early January, we were licensing Apes and Mutants and we were voting on the on sort of the early stuff that Neil needs to unblock writing the first chapter. And what uh, what is licensing Apes and Mutants? What does that look like logistically? Like uh, someone had an ape or mutant, how would they yeah. go ahead and, and license their ape? Totally. So, so we... Um, a user would go to members.jenkinsthevalet.com um, they would enter the site, but instead of using a username and a password, they would uh, connect their wallet with MetaMask and sign a transaction. And we would check to see that they have writer's room NFTs in their wallet. So then they would land uh, basically like on the homepage of our site, uh, our members portal is what we call it. And in the portal, uh, they could navigate to basically licensing. And, and, and what we would do if they were, if they were trying to license their own avatar, we would also check to see if they had apes or mutants in that same wallet. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we basically surface to you, like, you know, here are your writer's room NFTs, here are your apes and mutants, like, like match them up. Right. And so there's just this like sort of UX where, where users select the apes that they want to match to each writer's room NFT, press a couple buttons, acknowledge a couple agreements, and then uh, like that stores in, in our database. The thing that that's interesting is, you know, Jenkins started writing stories when, when say the, the BAYC floor was like 0.2, but uh, by the time we started licensing the BAY, the, the floor was probably like 30, it could have been 50. I, I'm not sure like yeah. exactly what it was, but it was, it was now inaccessible. It's 100. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. A lot of our holders, our early holders were really excited to participate in, in the first book. Because it felt, I think, to them like it was ape and mutant exposure in a way that was sort of different than owning one themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, and I'm sure we'll talk a bit about our roadmap 2.0, but what we're going to show over the next few months is that this whole thing is about a lot more than apes and mutants. But, uh, but one thing that mattered for book one was that many of our holders wanted to participate in licensing, but they didn't, they didn't own their own. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's another sort of nod to how cool like owning the commercial rights to your own NFTs are. Uh, what we what we made in our licensing portal was also like a different process where you know you and I could sign an agreement with each other that has nothing to do with the writer's room. I could send you an agreement and say, "Hey, Seneca, you have this ape. I I love it. I want to sell. I, I want to license it from you." So it's basically like a sub licensing agreement mm -hmm. where I say. Uh, give me the rights to use your ape in this book and I'll pay you some percentage of anything I ever make from it. And so then uh, when, when you go through that process in our portal, um, you sort of sign in, you demonstrate, you know, by signing in with your wallet that you actually own the ape, you give me the rights. And now we know on our end 
that like me, the person has the rights to use your ape. And so I can then mm -hmm. go through the process and, and sort of sign a second licensing agreement where I sign it to the, to the writer's room. And um, I know that's like, it's, it's really hard to describe like, oh, like just talking like over a podcast, but it does speak actually to sort of what we were building behind the scenes from August to November was like this, this really complicated like legal flow. Um, but the output, you know, at the end of January was that we ended up with 4,075 apes and mutants licensed to the book. Wow. So it's a That's massive, many. massive, massive amount of like folks who are, who are proving that, that owning the commercial rights to your IP outright can be a really exciting, fun and actually like profitable thing. Yeah, that's incredible. That's so many apes and mutants. Uh, so the license, it is uh, specific to this book and doesn't extend further than that. Is that correct? Uh, pretty much. It's um, The license is for this book and direct derivatives. So a direct mm -hmm. derivative would, would be, and there, there's, a, there's a way sort of cleaner legal definition, but it essentially would be a, a work in a different medium that is the exact, is the same plot. And so okay. what it means is that like we, if a sort of movie buyer or something, a production studio wants to make a movie of the book, we, we don't have to go out and re-sign the agreements with like mm -hmm. everyone who was in, but we can't yeah. go and use the apes like on writer's room merch or, or in a completely right, different right. story or anything like that. And um, that was actually a super interesting thing. And, and I think uh, it, it, we got into some heated conversations to put it like, I don't know, lightly with, with uh, traditional like entertainment council. Um, and even uh, CAA, I, I think was always like, like they sort of get web three there, they, you know, there are a number of folks who are, who are in space, but um, traditionally in Hollywood, you take all the rights you can possibly get. And so mm -hmm. like, like that's how it works. Like, like folks just like they, they take it all. And so then they can sell it and they can monetize mm -hmm. it. And, and, and it ends up in a situation I think often where like, creators are left behind like you see some movie blow up based off of someone's book and the person who wrote the book like isn't even participating in it like you know like yeah. long term and and so we got a lot of guidance that we needed to have really strict licensing rules so that we could sort of uh, have the rights to use these characters in many many ways so that we could give ourselves the best shot to like make a good movie or something and, and we we basically we, like we just pushed back and we said that's not that's not the web three way. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not what our community wants. Yeah. And so we're not going to do it. And even if that means that like most of the studios, just like most of the authors turned us down, if it means that most of the studios right. turn us down, like, so be it, we're going to bet on this community and what we're building and that someone will say yes. And if no one says yes, we'll find another way to do it. Uh, and it. so it's, it's like the, it's, it's the, it's the most member friendly licensing agreement we could possibly craft to still go be able to make the book. It's amazing. We'll make our own Web three Ruby Studio if if we have to. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely crossed my mind, right? That like Web three TV like probably has to exist one day, and it and mm -hmm. it and it that'll look a lot more like uh, like a DAO probably than than you know uh, some massive private company that like just serves up content that we like watch because we're you know targeted by the algorithm or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I want to get to roadmap 2.0, but I have one more question because it's burning at me like a logistical question. Anyone sure. who has licensed their ape or someone else's ape to be part of the book and whatever else, how does it logistically work in terms of them actually receiving royalties money? Is it paid in fiat? Do they get ETH USDC? Just how does that all work? For sure. Uh, great question. Um, and something that is pretty well defined, but I think actually still needs a little more work and, and we'll cross the bridge with the community when we get there. There's a few things um, that are challenging about how payments work, which is that basically every vendor ever wants to be paid in like their fiat currency. Mm -hmm. And so we, you can't run the whole business um, strictly like with ETH. And so mm -hmm. we end up converting, you know, a, a lot of what we make into like USD, for example. Mm 
the way the licenses work is when somebody signs a license um, for book one, what they're saying is that uh, it's a human being signing, saying, I'm, a, I'm agreeing that you can use this IP in your work. And in exchange for this IP, you will pay the wallet that holds this NFT whenever you make money. And so that means if someone transfers it you know, from a hot wallet to cold storage, or if they transfer mm. it from, from you to me or whatever, we obviously like use the blockchain to find where those avatars are, find the wallets that they're in at that point in time, and then uh, pay them out. And so certainly uh, payouts will be in crypto because they'll be sent to mm -hmm. wallets, probably mm -hmm. in ETH, but there's mm -hmm. gonna be a bit of a process where um, we make money. Some of it is ETH, some of it is probably USD. Uh, mm -hmm. We show our finances to the community because the, the the profit share is on net profits not on revenue so there are mm -hmm. going to be some expenses or costs that come up that that will be like obvious and justifiable i don't think anybody's gonna like argue with the fact that like there was money spent on marketing that ended up making more money like down the road or something mm -hmm. and um and so then we sort of get to like a more traditional almost like a web to um bottom line and then I think for the ease of like transactions, most likely what will happen is that bottom line ends up getting converted back into ETH uh, and, and sent to wallets that way is, is how I assume it will happen. There's a chance that it ends up being like a different currency or something like that. But um, the, the idea is that it should be seamless. It should be sent to wallets. There's not a need to, to do anything like deeper than that. Yeah, no, that's super interesting. Because uh, it is a difficult thing when you're merging web two and web three and payments and fiat that these companies businesses just have to make and then totally just all of this yeah yeah um, i mean all right we'll, let's we'll get, end up yeah oh i was just gonna say like we'll cross the bridge when we get there right it'll be a gift to have to have yeah. to have net profit to pay out and uh we learned a lot with the first round of licensing and we're actually shipping so many iterations that members portal like the next one i think will blow people away with how much better it is and I suspect the the second time we have to deal with payouts will be way better. And the third time, the fourth time, like one day I'll, we'll be back talking about this and I'll be like, this is exactly how it works. But, but until yeah. then, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll see what's best and, 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 and where we make mistakes. I mean, you're literally paving just new territory. This hasn't been done before. So, so much, so much of this space is just figuring it out as you go along. Totally. Yeah. It's fun. It is fun. It's yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's why a week feels like a year as well. Um, exactly. <laughs> all right, web uh not web map, roadmap 2.0. I'm going to actually share it just so that viewers can sort of follow along a bit. So, yeah, let's talk about roadmap 2.0. What when it dropped and if you could just talk us through all the different components of it, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. We we dropped roadmap 2.0 um on January 31st, 2022. And most of it will start to come alive over the next eight to 10 months, uh, eight to 10 weeks, excuse me. <laughs> so <laughs> that is uh, like two, two and a half months. Um, call mm -hmm. it, call it like, you know, like March and April. The, uh, I, I think to even like give some context to what Roadmap 2.0 is, there was uh, earlier in the conversation we were talking about, we started posting stories on Twitter and we recognized an opportunity to, to level up the ability. I mean, the belief is that decentralized crowdsourced community generative content is better than what you can make by yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And so that started with, with, with Twitter posts where the community would fill out. The next step was the writer's room, which was centralized our database, our proposals, but folks guiding creative direction based off of how they answer questions. And I think Roadmap 2.0 is that thesis of decentralized community generative content being the best, like in its final form. Um, and the way we're doing that is by incubating two DAOs that will be completely and utterly decentralized um, mm -hmm. and then contributing uh, significant ownership interest in our, all of our own IP to those DAOs so that they can sort of take the wheel from here and, and, and make some like really amazing things. We can't wait to see what, what they do. And so um, the way it works is that uh, every writer's room member will be able to claim 
uh, a book NFT. This is Neil's book, the the sort of first mm -hmm. Jenkins tell all. They'll be able to claim a book NFT for free. That's always been the plan. Uh, the there will also be a number of book NFTs that will uh, be available in a public mint. Uh, we have not announced the the quantity or the mint price on that yet. Um, and so anyway, after that's done, there's going to be some number of books that are just like out in the market. Um, and here's some game theory. Uh, holders of that book NFT, you can see the book NFT sort of icon up in the top left corner of this roadmap. And yeah. and and holder holders of that of that book NFT um, will have a couple of choices. Uh, and so you, if you go like along this journey, we're revamping the the members portal, which is in the bottom left corner. There's a little secret that we're not going to share today that I think will be a really fun thing with, with tragedy striking and, and, and a mission. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually some things happen where uh, Jenkins uh, ends up needing to travel to Azerbala, which is the, uh, the famed jungle capital all the way on the other side of the metaverse. Adventurers have tried to reach it for, for decades. No one has ever made it there, but remarkably a valet from the other side of the swamp is going to end there and sort of the whole community will come with him. And, and this is where the game theory happens. Folks will hold the, the book NFT and they can either burn that NFT or they can stake it. Um, mm -hmm. If they burn the NFT, uh, actually literally in the sprawls, which is sort of the underworld of Azerbala, reading is illegal. So there's an immersive mm -hmm. Azerbala experience that we're building right now. And uh, you will go to the sprawls and burn your book because books are illegal. Um, and in exchange for burning that book, you'll get uh, an Azer root, which is this sort of mythical plant that exists in Azerbala and the whole economy runs off of like what, you know, what comes from it. Um, and the Azer root can be, uh, can be taken to the monastery, another part of Azerbala, and it can be sort of uh, uh, given to the gods as like a tribute, as a way to sort of bless new, uh, inhabitants of Azerbala. It's like what parents do, you know, before, before like an Azurian citizen is born. And, and so basically what that, what in, in, in like web three layman's terms, you can burn your book for a mint pass and you can redeem your mint pass for, for an avatar. Uh, and that avatar is, is an avatar who lives in Azerbala. On the other side, you, uh, you can stake the book NFT. And basically the thought is if you don't want an inhabitant who lives in Azerbala, maybe you want to participate in a really dynamic community that is completely decentralized that owns and governs the world uh, and that's azerbala the jungle and everything mm. that makes it up the the monastery the sprawls and all these other neighborhoods that exist in the city um a uh you know a comp i guess if i was going to try to make an analogy is sort of like uh you burn your book for a board ape and I'm not mm -hmm. claiming at all that our avatars would, would be would be apes, but like just you heard it here example. first, folks. The avatars <laughs> are going to be 100 each floor. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cut that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, you know, you you would burn for an ape, and you would stake to have uh, governance tokens over like the yacht club is basically like the way you could think about that. Some mm -hmm. folks want to participate in the creation of the world um and anything that comes off of that world ip media franchises you name it um other people want to uh own and inhabit it in that world and play games with it and create content with it they will have 100 percent full commercial rights i mean creating and growing a character it has been the single best thing that Saf and I have ever done. I'd say like outside of like meeting my wife we want people to do the same thing we want them to also create characters uh and so and so those are like the choices that you have with the book nft uh and there's some really we will be contributing uh, significant ownership in azerbala to the to the dao uh, that mm -hmm. we're currently calling the media dao um, but but we'll probably have a you know a, a more a more like forward-facing name later um so that that this decentralized entity can can build off of it and we're, we like can't wait to see what happens. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Um, and and it, we I think the current writers, remembers plus anyone else who joins us with this book uh, are the perfect, perfect, perfect group to 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 take this into the future. That's so amazing. It sounds 
phenomenal. Like I, I literally got like chills down my spine when you're talking about Azabala and how it's this mythical land, how Jenkins is the first to get there. It's like I, I felt engrossed in the story. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, it's I cool. should give a, a massive, massive, massive shout out to Emma Nidell who's a screenwriter who we're working with on Azerbala. It is a hundred percent her brainchild. She came up with the sprawls, the monastery, so much more that you're going to see. She, she is like, it's inspiring to work with her. Um, and, and we're just like, we feel so lucky. Like we were pinching ourselves that we got to work with Neil on the book. Yeah. And this is like that all over again. And, and um, I think it's, I think people can feel good about, where this media DAO can go in the future, knowing that there are people like Emma out there who who, who want to work with them, um, because it's been it's been really incredible. That's so fantastic. It's really, I think, still just the beginning of so much talent that's in the world, both existing in Hollywood and in you know the the writers world, uh, who will want to. Some of them will want to, you know, come into Web3 and work with DAOs and, and build out a new universe themselves, as well as so much untapped talent that just now because of Web3 and the the great being the great equalizer, it will a good equalizer <laughs> that it could totally. improve. But um, yeah, they're going to come in and, and, you know, anyone from around the world who has the talent can potentially pitch a story and just get involved. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. yeah. And we feel that way about the about this DAO because on the DAO side, anybody can join. And, and we named the, the we named the, the, the first iteration like of, of this platform, the writer's room for a reason, because traditionally writer's rooms are really hard to break into, right? Like I, mm -hmm. I was a writer and you have to like, you have to know someone who knows someone who like, you know, taps you to be like an assistant to end up getting into something where eventually you can participate in a writer's room. And, and we wanted to imagine something different where anybody could mm -hmm. join. And we could recognize like anybody's creativity that sort of comes together to make something really special. And I'm just like, I think you've got that side, right? Which, which is in many ways an equalizer. And then you get the opportunity to work with someone like Emma who, who wrote um, a movie called The Waterman, which is on Netflix, which she EP'd alongside Oprah Winfrey. She's worked with Steven Spielberg. She, she's worked with Ava DuVernay. Like she's, she's got, she's really credentialed. But mm -hmm. she also, I deserve, she deserves so much credit for like seeing Web3 for what it is and what it can be. She emailed um, our agents and said, the future is here and I want to be a part of it. And I think that's that like, I'm just blown away that someone with like, that's that credentialed, you know, wanted, wanted, wanted to do this. And, and, I, and I'm sure we'll see more of that going forward. And they'll be able to partner with this truly authentic, real web three writers room and and, and we, we truly believe they'll make better content than uh than any of us could do on our own yeah a hundred percent i was listening to uh an episode of overpriced jpegs the podcast that carly riley hosts and she had on john rogers who i think is ex-creative director at disney i'm not a hundred percent sure but you know he, he's worked in a lot of branding and you know world building and vision uh, all that kind of stuff and he was mm -hmm. saying how what a lot of nft projects need and will want and will you know move towards is getting you know writers in to help build out their lore and their stories and their world building um and and that's sort of like missing with a lot of projects but there are a few exceptions doing it and we're going to see more and more of that going on because totally a lot of the yeah just, just the power of these these brands honestly like a lot of what what we call pfp projects we're now realizing they're not just pfps that these are brands being born in in web three and um they need stories and they need experienced screenwriters and storytellers to tell them a hundred percent i i agree with that and and a lot of projects will converge on each other uh i think i think you'll see you, you obviously see pfp projects to the point that you just made uh starting to invest in in lore and in narrative and in plot that can be engaging for the community and and, and can help people come into the brand um I don't think of what we're building with the media DAO and the character DAO that we can talk about um, and, and sort of everything else that we want to do outside of those decentralized entities um, as as being a PFP project. But we are bringing PFPs to market as inhabitants in Azerbala. And mm. it's 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 just the same thing, I think, that that other teams are doing, but but maybe in reverse, 
where it's, yeah. it's led with like with narrative first. Um, we we believe that everything comes back to character, um, that character development is crucial and that people can be provided with like tools and opportunities to build their own characters. And they can also participate in building out community owned characters uh, to make them like super, super interesting. And so that, that's everything that we're trying to do. So amazing. So I want to quickly touch on the last few things on the roadmap. Uh, they, I mean, they're all in the background. We've got physical books, merch, regional meetups, a few other surprises and continued licensing, licensing for writers remembers. Is there anything there that you, you want to touch on and mention? I mean, some of it's pretty self-explanatory, but any yeah. alpha about the surprises? Yeah. <laughs> I would love, I would love to touch briefly on, on a second DAO, which is the mm -hmm. character DAO and how that relates to licensing. I think that's a, that's an important piece. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's really no Jenkins without the community and, and, and our earliest writers room NFT members, I think joined us because they believed in the same thing that we believed in, which was that, which was that characters can be born on the blockchain and the content can exist sort of coming out of this space into the world. And so um, Tally Labs is going to be contributing significant ownership interest in Jenkins the Valet, Jenkins the Mutant, Good Boy, who is Jenkins' dog and only family, um, as well as seven uh, Azurian legends, as we're calling them, sort of characters that exist in Azurbala to a character DAO that is decentralized mm -hmm. and, and, and community owned and governed. Um, and so holders of writer's room NFTs will be able to stake those NFTs to receive governance tokens in the character DAO over over those characters and more. Um, and those tokens will will flow sort of proportionate to um, the NFT holdings. So so in other words, if someone has a writer's room yacht, they would end up with more character DAO tokens than if someone owned a mm -hmm. stand or a key or a ticket. Um, and this character DAO is something that we believe you know, could, could be amazing and, and, uh, and, it, and it pairs with the media DAO. So the media DAO is like the production studio and the character DAO is like the actors, the, the, the agents and the union. And it's not just Jenkins, the mutant and good boy and the Azurian legends who will exist in this character DAO because the character DAO can work together to, to create its own characters, to acquire new ones, to make partnerships with web two brands who want to enter the space. So someone's trying to figure out how to bring mickey mouse into web3 well there's no better community to partner with than a decentralized group of people who believe that characters should exist on the blockchain and that's the character mm -hmm. DAO. amazing we are yeah yeah i mean it's it's it, i uh i can't wait to see where the community like takes that one too because it's gonna be super 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 cool um one thing that we've learned obviously with with 4075 avatars being licensed to book one is that the licensing mechanic is something that people really enjoy and it's just mm -hmm. like an awesome way, right, to, 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 to use the IP that you own, right? Like that's one of the major reasons that, that, that a lot of people own some of their NFTs. And, and, you know, huge shout out to the BAYC for, I think, really making that like common practice compared mm -hmm. to what came before them. Um, and so there's still going to be licensing the same way that it worked for the book for any future project that we bring to market. We, we, we announced as a part of Roadmap 2.0 that there's going to be an audio experience. Um, and Jenkins will visit a number of other communities. And so to the early questions that we used to get back in August about is this project just for apes and mutants, there will be licensing opportunities to participate in future content across a number of new communities that are that are um, more of our holders own and that are more accessible than apes and mutants today. Um, and so that'll be licensed through the character DAO. And then the character DAO will, will you know, will make a deal uh, with, with us or, or, or you know, it, in the future with the media DAO or with another development partner that the media DAO is partnering with or something like that. And so um, all of that is something that we're excited to see. And, and, and that's a way that our members can continue to build their own characters while also governing and having ownership interest in, in characters that we all build together like Jenkins of LA. Phenomenal. I think that's just such an excellent, I guess, step forward branching out into these other communities because yeah, so many people have, either they don't have an ape or they have an ape and they have other, you know, NFTs and, and they would love to see them licensed. Um, and this is just such a great way to do it. Yeah. Totally. I, I mean, s s yeah. some people will probably, Oh, sorry. Um, I was just gonna no, say go like on. some people will, will probably continue to double down on their favorite character, 
which is super mm -hmm. cool. But other people yeah. will 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 do a little bit here with this one and a little bit there with that one, just based off of like the context of of what the content will be and which one they think sort of fits best. But um, the principles will always be the same, right? You're giving us the ability to use your IP in, in, in our work. And so you should be compensated for that, right? Because you own that IP and, and, and you're licensing it to us. I have one more question. Um, so there's about 4,000 apes and mutants that have been licensed. How many of those are realistically going to be in the book? And how is that? I'm assuming it's chosen by the community, but sort of how does that logistically work? Yeah, it's actually chosen um, or dictated based off of the, the the tier of the writer's room NFT that you hold. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are 6,942 writer's room NFTs. Um, 69 of them are yachts. And if you hold a yacht, your character is guaranteed to um, appear in the story as a character. Like they will be mm -hmm. written in, they will play a role in the story. If you hold a valet stand, um, there'll be an extra. And so in the book, that means they're illustrated prominently in the middle of the book. Like, like if, um, if you have a, if you have an ape in an astronaut outfit and they're written mm -hmm. in as a character and there are four other apes who are, who are, who have stand NFTs. So they're, so they're extra, they'll be illustrated. Then in a scene where an astronaut ape or space ape ends up playing like a really prominent role, you can expect sort of on the next page, you're going to see the other four illustrated, like, you know, mm -hmm. like they're helping that person out um the the yacht key nft and so there are about 300 stands there are about 1300 yacht keys and those characters will be in a game of where's jenkins it's so like a where's waldo game on the hmm. on the inside back cover it'll be a scene of the sort of plot in the book uh hmm. or like the central event and, and and you'll be able to find your character there and then the 5,000 ticket holders um or there are 5,000 tickets that you know fewer of them have been licensed they appear in sort of a special version of the acknowledgements um, in a fun way that sort of points out how, how, how the book is made possible because like all of them existed there too. They just weren't written mm. in, in any type of way. And so uh, tier is dictated that way. It was a blind mint. Um, and so the, you know, the, the, the intention was that the scope that you would pull would be based off of just like what you got, but obviously the market has since dictated um, yeah. like, you know, that some people, some people want, uh character development in a way that others don't um and uh, uh but all licensing fees are paid out the same so whether you're a main character or you're a ticket holder in a special acknowledgments um the 4075 avatars split 50 percent of net profits equally uh and so wow, the benefit cool. to holding like a higher tier is 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 that you can build character and and in a decade mm -hmm. if you keep compounding right being in all of this content that comes from collaborations with the character DAO, um, mm -hmm. certainly folks will have you know characters that are that are you know potentially significantly more well known than Jenkins mm. of LA or anything else that we made. Yeah. Uh, but but the payouts from from book one for sure, uh, and then going forward will be equal no matter what tier you have. I love it. I love absolutely everything I've heard. Um, I want to be respectful of your time. We've we've been going for about an hour. Is there anything else you just want to touch on or mention that we haven't covered yet before we wrap up? I don't, I don't think so. I want to uh, just say thank you to you, Zanika, for having me on. Um, it, you know, it's it's so it's fun. I love talking about what we're building um, with the writers room and with everything else. But uh, I also have just admired everything that you're doing, um, and would <laughs> would would kill to have an hour where I get to ask you all of these same questions. And so thank you so much for like taking the interest and for having me on and um and for being a holder right it, it's uh it's really like an honor no thank you for being here the honor is mine we got to get jenkins of la starting a his own youtube channel and then uh, yeah. i will come on yes i love it that would be great amazing all awesome. right well thank you so much for sure thank you all right take care did i tell you or did i tell you that was such great interview chat discussion conversation i loved it i hope you did too uh i should mention in the interests of full disclosure because i believe in that i own 12 jenkins of la nfts i have 10 valet tickets and two yacht club keys i think i think that's what they are i have 12 nfts from the jenkins of la ecosystem if you heard that that's my dog she wants food because it's you know 
because she's a Labrador cross and she loves food, but you know, it's, it's her time of day. This was not important, but Hey, I'm human. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I, uh, would appreciate any likes, comments, subscriptions, uh, share it with your friends. If you think it's interesting, it's clearly an excellent, interesting, fascinating project. I, I it's just different. And that's amazing. Uh, that's, that's about it for me. Have a great one, everyone.